So this is the shot we are going to recreate in this tutorial, or at least try to recreate. So let's open Blender and track our footage. First things first, go to the motion tracking tab. Now last night I was just thinking about doing something related to bags and balancing them, but I had no idea how to pull it off. My initial thought was to just arrange them in a weird balancing way and just leave it that way. You know, that would actually be cool, especially if it's track footage and you have this weirdly arranged um, bags there. But then I also wanted it to have some form of dynamics. So I did a lot of experimentation to try and figure that out. So that's what <laughs> I'm going to share with you guys today. Now let's go to frame one and detect features and track forward. And then detect features at the end and track backward. Yeah, we have a lot of good tracks. So let's delete some of those bad markers that are just moving too much. And let's try and solve camera motion. I have a 1.5 solve error. Let's delete some of these ones too. Because why is it going crazy there? We want something really smooth, you know? Okay, now let's clean tracks. Slide out of the projection error forward and delete some of the markers. Now let's solve this. So let's clean tracks again. And delete. Now let's see what that looks like. 0.67. Hmm. Let's do it one more time. Clean tracks. We only need about three markers on the floor and eight markers in total to have a good track. So let's delete this and solve camera motion again. Okay, 0.29 is good. So let's flip the resolution to 1080, 1080 by 1920. Let's hit setup tracking scene. Click three of these markers, um, this, this, and this and hit floor yeah good i think we have a good track now that seems to be sticking to the floor yeah i think i think it's, it started slipping at some points yeah so from about 50 to 90 the track was slipping so let's just start Let's start our render at frame 100. Yeah, when the track was actually good. Now let's bring this on the X axis, scale it. Same with this guy. Let's bring it up and move it back. Okay, let's drop in our bag that we're going to use for the video. Let me take out this light and the cube yeah this is just a simple nice ladies bag so let's bring this somewhere here in front yeah now let's model like a simple cube around our object that would serve as the rigid body since this bag is basically like a cube let's just model something like this yeah instead of us using the actual bag for the simulation I do this a lot when I'm working with objects especially objects that look weird and I don't want to spend forever trying to simulate that so we have this and um, in edit mode let's add let's add a cube let's add a cube scale it down Let's bring it here, scale it down even more, scale it on the Y axis. So this is going to be very, very quick. Also scale it on the X axis so it matches the handle. Yeah, this is going to be quite quick, we will not waste time in this. So let's rotate this entire thing to follow the handle of the bag. 
then click on this face and extrude it and rotate it a bit and extrude it and extrude some more rotate it a bit extrude it move it down rotate it a bit extrude move rotate extrude move rotate and just keep doing that till you get to the end yeah so we have something that looks like the bag so if we go back into edit mode we basically have the bag here but in a very simple mesh now what we want to do is to parent this real bag to our box bag yeah so when we move the box the main bag just follows now let's select both of them and then we arrange this so let's rotate this this way then shift shift d to copy bring it up here and rotate it this way and let's scale this down a bit bring it here let's shift d and bring this one here and scale it down a bit and shift d again bring it up here scale it up rotate it I think for the last one, I can just copy these guys and bring it up. Yeah, this should be interesting. Now the simulation will run a lot better. So let's click on our cubes and add a rigid body. Call it mesh and then go to rigid body copy from active. So we'll make sure only the box bag has a rigid body. The main bag shouldn't have anything like that. So when we hit play, we're going to have very fast simulations now. Yeah. So let's add in a cube, scale the cube up and basically try to fit the cube inside the entire simulation. So scale it on the Y. So like give it some boundary. Now that it's acting crazy, let's see what will happen if we case the entire simulation in a in a light boundary now make this cube invisible and let's see what happens now okay that was weird <laughs> but this actually looks cool if i just rendered this out just balancing this way this would actually be cool but then I, I didn't stop there i didn't stop there i still wanted to experiment with it so what i did next was to add a force and set this to like minus 100 the strength and bring it up like right above the rest of it and let's see what will happen like would it still fall down let's simulate so it still falls down but then it's kind of trying to stand also I think the reason why it's it's jumping like that is because it's intersecting somewhere. Let's make sure our meshes are not intersecting. There's actually space in between each of them. But when we hit simulate, we want it to fall and not pop up. Okay, cool. Let's see this. Yeah, it's falling. Now let's change this from minus 100 to 300. So we'll have more upward force interesting so now it's overpowering gravity now let's change this to minus 200 this is interesting <laughs> uh, let me let me turn off gravity in the scene rigid body gravity just turn it off Okay, without gravity, everything just goes up. Okay, now that we know this, let's duplicate this force and bring it down. I'm just experimenting here. So let's see what happens. Hmm, interesting. Now they're basically dragging each other. 
Um, let's make the one that is coming down a little bit more powerful. So minus 250. Let's see if that would make any difference. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see it with just the down force field. Okay, I think I like something like this. So let's not delete the force, but let's make it very light, like minus 50. Yeah, that is giving that, that balancing effect. Like it's trying to find a balance. Hmm. Let's just play with the play with the figures. Let's try minus hundred. But we don't want it to seem floaty. We don't want this one to seem like it's floaty. We want it to look like it's trying to balance. Hmm. Let's try minus eighty. This is the game, man. If you want to work with simulations rigid body and whatnot <laughs> you're going to play with values all day yeah i think i like this so i wouldn't start my simulation from here i would rather start it when it has landed yeah at 140. Yeah, now it looks like the bugs are trying to balance. Yeah, so that's basically it for this effect. You just need to add in your HDRI image, your HDRI lighting. You see, we already have a nice looking video. Now, the last thing we need to do is to make these cubes invisible. So just turn them off. Yeah. We don't want to see the cubes, we want to see the actual bugs. So since we parented the bugs, they are going to be affected by the cube. Oh yeah, don't forget to bake your simulation actually. Bake the simulation. Yeah. So it doesn't go crazy. Yeah, so you can pile up more more bugs on top of each other and just see the kind of thing you get. And you can also adjust the cube. You can play with this cube. If we make it wider, it's going to move different. If you, if, if you just adjust this cube and adjust the number of these items, you're going to come up with something that looks really cool. So that's how I did that video essentially. It was just me experimenting and just playing with stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.